Jeep Gladiator Overland. This is the 2020 Jeep Gladiator with the 3.6 Pentastar V6 engine with 285 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. Um, there's also a diesel uh, Gladiator available for you. And I don't know if they're gonna drop the V8 in this because we all know that Jeep announced how they're gonna put the 450 horsepower SRT engine in the Jeep Wrangler. So will the Jeep Gladiator get it? I think it probably will, but only time can tell. For those of you who didn't know, the Gladiator was actually a, a Jeep from like the back in the day, like the 60s, long, long time before I was born. Um, but now they completely brought it back because a lot of uh, Wrangler owners were asking for a pickup truck version of the Wrangler and um, even even some of them went the full extent to actually convert their Wrangler into a pickup truck which cost just tens of thousands of dollars but now Jeep finally offers a Wrangler pickup truck um, the Jeep Gladiator but it's not a Wrangler it's a Gladiator specifically and don't just think of this as a Wrangler with the bed on the back which it, I mean it looks like just a Wrangler with the bed on the back but Jeep actually took um, components from the Ram 1500 like the back axle to make this uh, an actual truck so it's just not a Wrangler with the bed on, on the back um, but the Gladiator comes just in this form um, with the four doors and a five foot bed. You can't get like a two door and a longer bed or anything like that. This is the only configuration of it. The reason why is because Jeep said that 80% of the market, they buy um, like a, a crew cab with a five foot bed. So Jeep just said they're gonna stick to this. They're gonna stick with what most of the market wants. Um, so this is the only Gladiator you get. But I haven't reviewed the JL Wrangler, the Wrangler that this car is based on. So I'm pretty much gonna go into like a lot of different things that this car has and also the Wrangler has. Starting with one of my most favorite things about it compared to the JK Wrangler are the headlights. So you get these in this specific one, um, you get these LED daytime running lights that are on the fender um, that, and are also the rings around the main headlights. If you don't get this lighting package, you get um, incandescent bulbs. Um, but I really love the way these LEDs look. Uh, they really modernize a classic look, the look of like the classic Jeep, the Wrangler. Another really cool thing about it is this grill right here, which looks really cool and in theory would work very well because it could potentially channel air from the front here and out through the vent. Um, but in this application, it's a fake vent. And I just really wish that Jeep put a real vent in there, but it's a fake vent, but it looks cool. A lot of people are doing fake vents nowadays, so whatever. Around back, you obviously get the five foot bed, but unlike the Jeep Wrangler, there's no wheel on the back. The wheel is actually underneath, just like a traditional truck. And you see that big Jeep logo on the back. On the Rubicon, it's actually outlined in red, which looks amazing, but this is the Overland, one step below the Rubicon. Um, so basically you get the Sport, the Sport S, the Overland, and then the Rubicon, and even the Mojave, which I think is a limited edition. But basically the Overland is the Gladiator's version of the Jeep um, Wrangler Sahara. Uh, so you get pretty much the same bits and pieces if you're familiar with uh, Jeeps already. But what's cool about my tester is you get these LED taillights um, and the light actually wraps around like this and you get the full LED reverse light, brake lights and everything. And if you come around to the side, you see this piece right here? That is actually where they put the blind uh, spot monitoring sensor. So that's on the side. There is really no other way they could think of at least um, to incorporate that in. So you have this plastic piece. If you get the if you get the gladiator with the incandescent tail lights, they don't have that piece, so they don't have the blind spot monitoring system. So you see the LED light wrapping all around, which is really nice. Um, 
One thing that you'll find on this pickup truck that you won't find on any others is the third brake light is actually on the tailgate. Usually they put it at the top of the cab, um, but this being one of the only, or pretty much the only convertible pickup truck you can buy right now, um, since you're capable of removing the top, if the top's down, you're not gonna have your third brake light, so then the car is not gonna comply with laws. So they had to put it on the tailgate. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to do this all backwards. They have to put it on the tailgate um, for those reasons. And this one has the optional cover um, for your Jeep Gladiator for the bed. What's really cool about this cover is, as long as this is closed, you can't get into this. It locks with the tailgate. Um, but once you open it up, open up the tailgate, it drops slowly. This will flop off um really nicely really easily to get things in and out of the bed but if you need to load even bigger things um all you got to do to take this cover off is pull this red tab right here and then you walk around pull this one here as well and now all you got to do is just <laughs> pull it again now all you got to do is just roll it and you gain access to the five foot bed of the Jeep Gladiator. Inside the bed, you actually get this full outlet back here. Um, and it's covered by this thick plastic piece that will prop down, making sure it's always shut. Um, that way, no water, dirt, any dust gets in here messing it up, um, making sure that's completely um, waterproof. You also get these lights, um, one here, one on the other side of the bed to light up the, the contents of your bed um, and there's this button inside the cabin that turns on and off the lights of the five foot bed now what's weird about the gladiator is you have all this space but the door curves right here what's with that so jeep actually took the door um, pretty, and pretty much the rest of the front of the car from the Wrangler. If you were in an accident um, or you wanted to do any like aftermarket parts, it's, it's really easy to just get the same parts that fit on the Wrangler as the Gladiator. But getting into the back of the Gladiator, it's kind of awkward because of this piece. I wish there was like more room to get in of the, to get into the, to get inside the back of this car. It's not like a full-blown pickup truck like a 1500 Ram or F-150 uh, Ford. But you climb in kind of awkwardly. And now we're in. So I'll tell you it's not, it's definitely not an Escalade in here. I don't really have a ton of room, but it is doable. Um, I can sit here for um, a trip, even a road trip. I definitely have the headroom. Um, I'll have even more once I take the top off. But it's really, the seats are fairly comfortable. Um, this being a pickup truck, the back um, does like sit at almost a 90 degree angle. Um, so I can't really like kick back and relax in the back of the Gladiator. But this one does have the optional leather seats that look really nice. They're fairly soft. Um, and everything's like really good quality back here. You also get two USB ports, as well as two USB-Cs, and a full outlet right in the back here in front of your cup holder. Another cool thing about this is this seat can um, come up completely. So you just pull the handle, it comes up, and under there, there's actually a box where you can put things in, and you can actually lock it. So if you say you go to the beach, you leave the top open, um, and you have like valuables that you need to keep in the car you can actually put it in this box and completely lock it um, but you can open it up and you get like a good amount of storage and the box opens in a 60 40 split just like the seats do um, so you don't have to worry about lifting up both sides of the seats to put stuff in there so that's a really good thinking from Jeep. now sitting in the driver's seat of the gladiator this particular one, this particular Overland with all the additional features is $53,000. But for $53,000, I still have to manually adjust 
my the driver's seat and the passenger seat. Fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money, and I like power operated seats. But I do understand that not having power operated seats in such a rugged and off-road ready vehicle. So I guess that's fine. But the dashboard, just like the current Wrangler, the JL Wrangler, you get this upright dashboard. Um, but it's fairly nice in here and, and it's much nicer than the old Wrangler. My tester has the 8.4 inch info, infotainment system screen um, that has a crystal clear rear view camera. This is one of the best rear view cameras I've seen in any cars. And I, I've driven Bentleys and this is better. This is a better rear view camera than in the Bentayga. And this is a pickup truck. But in the Rubicon, which is the off-road ready version of the Gladiator, not that this can go off-road, just the Rubicon can do more. Um, you, you get a front facing camera in that as well. So if you're on a rocky trail, you can actually put on the camera to see what exactly is in front of you if you can't see it from the driver's seat, which is really cool. In the infotainment system, you also get off-road pages. So in the SRTs, like the track clock, um, or the Jeep SRT, you get SRT pages that like tracks performance data or you know, you're driving. So you take it to the track. Well, in one of these, you get off-road pages. So it tracks performance data, but for off-roading and you can see different angles and elevations, which is really cool and a really useful thing to have in an off-road car like this. But since you can take the doors off of this car, uh, Jeep didn't bother putting too much on the doors because you can take them off and they didn't want them to be too heavy. So pretty much the only things you get on the door is the lock and unlock switch and the mirror control. One thing that I don't really like about this is the mirrors are on the doors itself. So when you take off the doors, you also take off the mirrors, um, which is why on the new Ford Bronco, they actually put the mirrors on the body of the car. So when you take out the doors off of that, the mirrors stay on the car, making it making it a lot easier to drive the, the car. But the window switches are in the center right here um, for all four windows. If you go to the back, the window switches are also in the center console. But Jeep's, basically FCA's infotainment system is one of the best infotainment systems in the game and except for like um, MBUS and Mercedes Benz's because it's such a simple layout um, and you really don't need more than two minutes to really know where everything is in the infotainment system. And also all of the controls like the heated seats, the temperature, the fan speed, there are all hard buttons for that. So you can easily adjust that while you're driving the car. If you don't want to use the buttons, you can also access all of this information in the infotainment system. So it gives you, Jeep gives you both options, which is really cool. And this one with all the bits and pieces has a heated steering wheel and heated seats, making it even more comfortable. So this one is more of like the daily, more comfortable Wrangler, while the Rubicon and the Mojave are like the, the off-road ones. But before we go any further, please subscribe and like this video because um, I love cars and I really want to do this for a long period of time. I don't want to do, do this for just a short period. Um, so like this video, please subscribe. I really, really want to get to a thousand subscribers um, as soon as possible, hopefully by the end of this year. So driving the J, I mean, I was about to say JL Wrangler because it looks just like a Wrangler in here. Um, but driving the uh, Jeep Gladiator. Now, if you've driven a uh, JL Wrangler, the current Wrangler, um, it'll be very familiar because the interior of this car is exactly the same as a Wrangler, um, but it's just a pickup truck. Um, and this pretty much, to me, feels exactly like a Wrangler feels. Um, for some people, it feels a little bit different. Granted, this is a longer wheelbase than the Wrangler, but for me, it feels exactly the same. Um, it drives way better than the old Wrangler, the JK Wrangler. It drives more of a, a well put together car and it's fairly comfortable, but so I rented this car. Um, I've had it for about 
three, four days now. Um, and I'm in New York City, and if you know New York, I drove this from New York City to Plattsburgh, which is right by the Canadian border, and then I, which is like five hours. Um, and then I drove it from Plattsburgh to Buffalo, which is about six hours, and then I drove it from Buffalo back to New York City, which is like another six hours. So I spent a lot of time on the highway with this. Um, and one thing I can tell you is like even though it feels a lot more solid than an old Wrangler or like an older body on, on frame SUV, um, like it kind of sways a lot on the highway. Um, so I'm I constantly like I constantly have to concentrate on keeping this within the within the lines on the highway because it's constantly swaying. I think it's because the steering wheel is really loose in this. Um, you're not gonna feel this if you're off roading because like the car is tuned perfectly for going off road. Just on the road, it's not the best. Um, so really buy one of these if you really need it or if you really, really want it. Um, and you're like... Red light camera reported ahead. Thanks, Waze. And you're like uh, going off road sometimes and not just having this on the road. But can you, can you daily drive this? I would say, yeah, definitely. You could daily drive it. Um, it does take a lot of getting used to, especially if you were to like come out of of a, like a sedan or a small SUV like a Nissan Rogue or a Jeep Cherokee. It is quite a difference. You also get some cool safety features in this. So you'll get your blind spot monitoring like I mentioned earlier, but you'll, my tester has adaptive cruise control, um, which will slow down if the car in front of you slows down. Um, but what this is missing from like a overall safety package is lane keep assist and a lane departure warning. Um, Jeep would have put this in, in the car. It's just that the way the, the way this car is shaped and the way it's set up, they couldn't really put that in there, which is fine. Um, as long as it has adaptive cruise control, because that's really important to me. If I have, if I buy a car, it definitely has to have adaptive cruise control. So would I buy, rent, or destroy this car? It's a definite rent. And I'll tell you why, because if I was gonna get a pickup truck, I would get the Ram 1500. And the TRX had that with the 700 and uh, whatever horsepower. But this is an undeniably really cool, dope, and kind of weird car. Um, but if you like this video, please remember to hit the like button and please hit that subscribe button. So I can continue to get more and more cars for you guys. Peace out.